can you explain what Ayurvedana is in its simplest form? And if somebody asks you the question, what Ayurvedana is, how would you explain? Give me a few minutes, let me share how I would answer that question. This is the Monkey Aviation 6 and the aircraft. And the So Ayurvedina says the ability of an air system to retain its design certified operational and maintenance standards and to make sure they continue retaining those standards. So in layman's term, when an air system serves the purpose of its intended use, that's what we call Ayurvedina, what is its intended use to fly. So usually Ayurvedina is continuing, we need to make sure aircraft fly Let's see how we comply to this standard in the next few slides. So now you have this big organization in front of you. He's the top man, top person of our uh, Ayurvedinus food chain, IASA. So for the purpose of this video, I've used IASA because majority of you are aware of IASA. So he's the top man, he's the top body who gives us permission to design an aircraft, to maintain an aircraft and to make sure the aircraft stays with intended standards. So the first thing is, what do we need to do first? We need to design an aircraft. So we need to design an aircraft, we need to find parts for that aircraft and we need to, uh, by part I mean we need to find engines and in those engines we need to find different parts like gearboxes. There's many things involved with this design process everything to do with design go in this document called part 21 part 21 is design approved organization you need a part 21 license to operate as a design organization or part um, repair organization because many things under that part so there are many sub parts so what do we need first we do need a concept we do need a design and for that design we need engines propulsion systems and in those propulsion systems we need other parts which are which can be gearboxes com compressors so there is no one organization that creates all of them there's there's different organizations having different parts to play in this process of airworthiness so these organizations should all have have part 21 approval so there are many sub parts under part 21 you need to understand your business and you need to get the correct approval in part 21 it states all the requirements to get this approval so these are the, this is the preliminary part of an air system how do we design and also these things have certification process as well how to deal with EASA to get the aircraft certified so everything is done now what does EASA do Airbus goes to EASA, look, we have a new aircraft, we, we need to make it functional, we need to put it into the business. So what does the um, EASA say? EASA says, okay, give me these documents, give me this information, evidence that your aircraft is airworthy, then I'll give you the permit to fly and then certificate of airworthiness and also a type certificate. A type certificate is is given to the DO design organization by EASA saying that you have met all the requirements and a certificate of airworthiness is also given by the EASA say it is good to good to fly also what is permit to fly permit to fly is given by the governing body again to make sure during testing phases they have they have the approval to do the uh, flying test otherwise without a certificate of evidence you can't fly they give a permit to fly just to do the testing okay everything's good they have the type certificate now what do they want now they want competent people we need people to work on the aircraft these people they are called certifying staff they are approved by part 66 license they need to have this level of competence we need to say look this is the part 66 requirements you need to fulfill the requirements in order to hand over the aircraft to you to do maintenance on it so part 66 is the license and every 
uh, aircraft certifying staff has to comply with part 66 requirements in order to get the license okay now we have competent people we have a fully functional aircraft where do we train these competent people to train these competent people we need to go to an approved training school this approved training school is called part 147 approved training schools there are also other uh, training schools such as part 66 modular uh, programs which we're not gonna talk in this video it's another video so we have part 147 now again part 147 has all the requirements written there what do you need to set up a part 147 school so that's part 147 for you now we have an aircraft and um, we have competent people we have uh, a training school to um to train these competent people the next thing we need is a space to for these competent people and for that aircraft to work under one hood so what is this called this is called part 145 an approved maintenance organization and so this part 145 organization carry out maintenance tasks from hx to c checks and a subsidiary of a part 145 is also line maintenance where another competency for a certifying staff category a license they need to have work on the aircraft on the line so, so just a side note just as aircraft need airworthiness to make sure that it serves its intended purpose my channel needs subscribers to make sure i bring you better quality videos, more information, more knowledge. So let's go to step number five. Are we done yet? I don't think so. so we have come a long way from the design, the concept until maintenance part. We now have an airworthy aircraft, but are we gonna stop there? No, we're gonna continue maintaining this aircraft. We're gonna continue complying to the regulations and we're going to make sure these aircraft meet the standards at any point of time who does this thing that is part camo initially this was called part m now they are they are called part camo uh, so part camo is continuing airworthiness management organization what they do is they make sure that all the schedule maintenance are properly done duly and also we adhere to the regulations simultaneously they make sure that the aircraft remain airworthy they make sure that the aircraft serves its intended purpose so this is a brief video on airworthiness and what is airworthiness so the five parts i mentioned which is part 21 part 66 part 147 part 145 they are approval certificates if we need to set up any of these organizations we need to apply through a competent body and in this video the competent body is EASA that organization gives us the privilege to do this work and to make sure we keep the aircraft running as long as it is intended to run so this is how i would explain someone what airworthiness is in its simplest form and if you have other ways of explaining what airworthiness is please do put them down in the comment section below let's share the knowledge so until my next video keep fixing